script C sharp boo. Let's go ahead and create C sharp. We'll call this my debug demo. Okay. I always like that you can see the code itself on the right hand side too. Very appealing. This way you can quickly uh, glance at what you're doing. Now we could use uh, mono develop here, yeah. but since we have made Unity VS for free, I've installed it on the system that Perfect. shows right here. You have to import it into every project. So Visual Studio Tools. It's a package like anything else. Import it in. It's going to create a folder down there. You can leave yes. We're good to go. Double click on this guy. Perfect. Yep. Now this code, as of right now, is not going to be doing anything. What we're going to do, Unity gives us two methods. Start for when this particular object, whatever this code is assigned to when it initializes, debug that log starting. Okay. And over here, we've got something called update. This runs every single frame. So that how, how often is that? Depends on how fast your game is running. It could be 60 frames a second, 200, 30, just all depends. This changes all the time. Absolutely. And what we're going to do here, since I mentioned that transform is probably the most important property, right. we can just reference it from whatever this code is assigned to. Okay. You'll notice this inherits from mono behavior, and that basically allows you to integrate with these game objects. So let's use this code. Right now, it's not being used at all. And you can see right away it's updated on the imported object on the right-hand side. You got it. As, as soon as I switch back to Unity, it detects a code change, does a background compilation with Mono. Yes. So I'm going to drag this script onto my cube. As soon as I do that, I can see it's just another component here. Perfect. This tells me this code is going to be run on this object. I click on Play. I can see it moving. Yes. Every frame it's actually being called. And let's go to uh, my console, which is kind of like your debug output window. And I can see starting. Got called once there. OK. So we know that function was executed, that start function. And so this little guy here, transform.translate, this is saying we want to move our transform. And we could actually do, if we look transform.position, we can see our dot x, our dot y, our dot z. And that represents where we are in the world. We saw that as we move an object around, it updates these. So when I say transform.position.x, it's giving me that. Transform.position.y is giving me that. Every single frame here, I'm coming over here and just simply saying, I want you to move forward. This is a predefined uh, vector, it's called. We'll talk about vectors a little bit in our 3D. And this is saying, hey, every frame, we're just going to advance this by a little bit in the forward direction. Forward, in this case, is wherever the object is currently pointing. So if I come in and I rotate this object here, notice it's forward. There is a world forward, which is always the same direction. Yes. This is the local forward. And that's why we actually use this translate call. We're saying, hey, go to whatever's forward for this current object. OK. It's forward as opposed to our world forward. So we have two different, actually several different coordinate systems here. We have our world space. And we have our local space. Yes. And we can say move forward in world space or move forward in local space, which is what we're telling it right here. But relevant to that actual character or object. Debug.log updating. Log is your friend because uh, it'll constantly keep you informed of what's going on behind the scenes for your project. And let's do this. Set a breakpoint. I'm going to say attach to Unity. Build. Go back over to Unity. Give it one second here. It's doing this background attach. Wait for it. Are you waiting for it? I'm waiting. I am very patient. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Looking for Unity. We found it. Connect to Unity. And it looks like at this point in time, it's having a problem connecting. Of course, the demo gremlins came down from the cameras right into my system. That's OK. So what we will do here is we will. Everybody's seen this before? That's our task manager, so we can see. Uh, how our machine is utilizing different parts of our, our, our project or our assets at once. So I closed Unity out. Uh, yep. It happens on occasion. It's, uh, I would call it more rare, but always save your work. Save early, save often. Actually, we'll have an entire uh, 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 course on this very shortly in the agenda. Absolutely. So what I want to just show you was how we had attached code to any kind of game object. We can just literally take it, drag it on up, and that code runs for it. Yes. Second last thing we'll talk about real quick, physics. Okay. We're going to go into this more depth in our 3D course, and then we'll cover particles. So physics, real easy to show. We'll take a game object here. Actually, I think we added a rigid body here. So our game object, we did a cube. 
On that cube, we added a rigid body component. What is a rigid body? If anybody remembers from high school physics, this is what's giving your object mass. Okay. And it's allowing it to understand gravity by default. Okay. If I click on play right now, this guy's fallen. Look at him go, all of them. All of them, they all have that because I added that to that uh, prefab before. Now they don't understand collisions yet. So if we want to add a collider onto there, we simply, it's actually a box, collider's already on our cube, but we can add colliders. And uh, I think Carl's gonna cover that in 2D next, and I'm Perfect. definitely gonna cover colliders when we go over the next session. We don't wanna get ahead of ourselves. And lastly here, let's go ahead and create a particle system. Just like that, notice these are coming out like wireframes because I have my mode there to textured wire. Ah, there we go. Look at that. Just like that, we've got a particle system coming out. I can say my start size. Maybe I want more smoky effect, make them bigger. Yeah, look at all the variables it exposes to you and how Let's easy that is. 50. <laughs> there we go. We want smoke, you got smoke. You yeah. want small particles like that? Perfect. You wow. can apply so many different parameters here. Rotation, speed, color over time. You got it. I mean, you can do so many things in there. What people do with the particle effects, amazing. Yes. A, uh, there's a great tutorial on Unity site, like an explosion. One particle effect creates a ring. Another one creates an explosion effect mm -hmm. out of it. So you can overlap the two of them together and do some really, really neat effects. It's really part of uh, juicing or, or increasing the quality of your game, having something as simple as that. Absolutely. That brings us to the end of this fine session. We talked about uh, intro to Unity, the architecture on there, how we can just simply add code onto it. Now, granted, our code example was pretty simple to hear. We don't want to start out too strong with the right, right, code right. on there. One step <laughs> at, at a time. One step at a time. Uh, Carl's going to cover it more. I'm going to cover it more. So we're going to definitely look at these concepts a little bit more in depth as we get into actual game development as we go on. Okay. Talked about game objects. Everything in your scene is basically a game object yep. near everything. Um, the asset store. Asset store. Components, because components are what brings your game objects to life. And are you excited for what's coming next? Absolutely. We've got two more days of this. Uh, today, tomorrow, and I believe on Thursday, we will have uh, other guests in here. Yes. Now, I, I want to mention that the, uh, this module is currently being recorded, and it will be available in about two, three weeks on Virtual Academy, if you want to rewatch it then as well, which I highly recommend. Absolutely. The entire course. Too. The entire course. Everything you see here today and tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hello, and uh, welcome to the next session. Uh, in this section, we will cover how to make a 2D game. We're very excited about that. How we can actually use uh, artwork from the asset store and create a game in, uh, in less than uh, 40 minutes. So, to right here is Carl Karkwai, who is the head of Uni Evangelist. And I'm Tobias Marks, who is the game evangelist at Microsoft. Why don't you tell us about yourself, Carl? Uh, I've been working a long time in the game industry. I'm very excited about that because uh, I used to work on AAA titles and then later on I went to work on indie uh, titles and there I found my passion and from there actually I joined Unity uh, to show, to share the knowledge of our community through our community and for our community and share the, uh, the knowledge of our devs to our community too. So uh, very exciting. Uh, in the last years we've seen a tremendous growth on a lot of indie games and uh, I keep playing them, uh, keep buying a lot of games thanks to the community. I'm all about indie games as well. Uh, when I graduated college, uh, I started my own game development company making mobile games, and I was able to run that for uh, four plus years or so until I joined Microsoft as a game evangelist, where I get to talk to game developers like you guys out there and help them out and do cool stuff like that. And I'm based in uh, Mountain View, California. You can find my blog right there if you want to find information. So what are we going to cover today? Uh, today we're going to cover how to make a 2D game. I can show you actually my screen here. It's a simple game right, where we... Uh, to press the play button here in Unity, as Adam talked about. And what we see is here, we see the game, we can start the game, and then uh, start to play the game. And we pick up objects and uh, jump. And what we're gonna do is we have to avoid also some uh, objects here. If I don't kind of avoid it, I die and I get my points, I can play, play again. So we're gonna create how to create here a menu, how to create a character, uh, the animations, okay. Uh, so I'm going to open here uh, the, the scene next that I have here, this is the scene. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, go to here. So this is the character. Okay. 
And what this was, is a 2D scene too, so the settings yeah. are all set up for 2D. So you can see here the uh, button uh, 2D, okay, and I can click on that, and I see now the scene actually in 3D, but I can go to 2D here, okay. And what we're going to have to do is first we're going to have to create this environment, okay, like one of those uh, building blocks. Mm -hmm. I have here a prefab, okay, another prefab here, and move this around. Like we're going to create those building blocks, okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to make an endless runner, see the character running. So we're going to have to move them, uh, move those objects forward. Okay? A lot, uh, when my character moves one of the uh, components here, we're going to move that forward. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, what we also have to do is actually create our character here, place it in the scene, and make the different animations for it. And also define when we're going to run, jump, and Transition fall. between those animations. Exactly. And uh, then another, the cool is the, is the game aspect we're going to create is picking up those objects. Like here we have a fuel can. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, here you can see, you know, maximize my screen a little bit. So we're gonna, you have the fuel can here. We're going to have to pick up that uh, fuel can and we're going to get points for that. And that's actually going to involve some scripting too. That we're going to have to create scripting for. Right? The basic will be really focusing uh, the beginning for the artists, like how to bring in the artwork, place it there. And then we're going to have to do the scripting of the character moving, the character picking up but also playing the audio file and then avoiding the uh, the dangerous part. The um, I have here, the uh, let me show you here, the lasers. And where we have lasers, so we're going to have to avoid those objects and jump over. Okay? Otherwise, uh, our character... Game over. game over, exactly. All right, sounds great. Where do we start? Uh, we're going to start with the artwork. So what I'm going to do is, I, I don't want to start with the whole project here finished. I like to start with a total empty project so that you can see everything from begin. So you don't have to... Um, you can start from the beginning, really scratch empty uh, plate, and uh, we're going to start with that so you don't have to um, I know something really from the beginning. So what we're going to do is a, a new scene, a new project actually, okay. Uh, we can give it a name here, uh, we're going to give it here uh, uh, 2D game, okay, and we're going to start with that. Yeah, remember to make sure the setting is set for 2D. Oh yes, this is a very good point to point out here, we have here a setting 2D or 3D. Uh, the 3D uh, and 2D, it doesn't mean you're going to make a 3D game or a 2D game. We actually, it's all about just make it easy and fast when you're going to make a 2D game, it's the import settings. Okay. So to show it... You can change those after you make your project. So if you make it the wrong way, it can be done. But yeah. for the defaults, we want to make sure everything's set to 2D. Yeah. So what I can do, you're going to put it wrong. And I, I will show you how you actually, you can just change Just to show it. where those settings are? Yes, exactly. So we're going to create a project. And we're going to, we don't have to save this project. Okay. And we're restarting Unity, so we have an empty project. Okay. And what we it see looks is like it's 3D at the start because yeah. we did the wrong setting. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong shortcut here. So what we see is here, it says here 2D, but it's actually a toggle button. Mm -hmm. uh, very good to point that out. So when you click on the 2D, we see nicely here the, uh, the screen no in 2D. And that's just changing the way we're viewing the scene in the editor. It's not actually changing the project settings when we hit that. Exactly. Uh, you, you can combine 2D and 3D mm -hmm. in one project. So where do we change the import settings? Very good. So we can go here to edit, and in the project settings, the editor, this how our editor behaves. Okay. There we can say, instead of a 3D mode, we can say, when we import textures or uh, images, put it to 2D. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but I can first show you the differences, so that you really can understand what the benefit of that is. Okay, I'm gonna go here, and I have here all uh, images that I have for my game ready. All the ones we just saw in the previous project. Yeah, uh, all those images will be available on Asset Store, totally for free to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, maybe to one of my environment objects, and there you can see I'm gonna take here one, and I drag and drop that into Unity in the Assets folder. That's how we import an object. Okay. We see it here. If I want to drag and drop that now in my TV scene here, it doesn't work. That's because it's a texture. Exactly. This is a, a texture here. I can think of a, uh, the texture here. So in order to bring a texture into my scene, I have to actually create a 3D object. And I actually like a quad or something, a plane. Okay. If, uh, to zoom in, to I frame on this object here. Mm -hmm. okay. And what we're going to take, we're going to take that texture and drag it on top of there. Okay. But that's what you would do if you're doing a 3D game. Exactly. But for a 2D game, there's a much easier, more optimized way. Yes. So let me show you the differences. Like I'm going to put it here to a transparent so we see the object here. What we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this object for the moment. And what we're going to say, instead of a texture, 
we're gonna put that to a sprite. And that's you're changing the actual asset in your assets folder from a texture to a sprite. Exactly. So this is a uh, an asset eh? that we can you over and over. It's an over project folder. Eh? This is actually our hierarchy. The hierarchy is then what's actually in our scene, in our game, okay, in our, on level based. What what instances are currently in the scene? Exactly. It's a really good way.